What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're going to be talking all about long shots in Modern Warfare 2, since we do require so many long shots in order to get platinum camos. And it seems like we've reached a point where a very big portion of the community is currently working on long shots. So I just want to make that go a little bit easier for you. And diving right into it, let's start this off with the long shot range thresholds for each of the weapon class types, because we do need to get long shots for every one of these weapon classes. And starting it off with sniper rifles, you have to be at least 50.8, or we'll just round up to 51 meters away from the target in order for it to count as a long shot. Anything closer to that will not be counting as a long shot. For assault rifles, LMGs, marksman rifles, and battle rifles, the threshold for long shots is 38 meters. For SMGs, it's 30 meters. Pistols are 20 meters. And finally, for shotguns, the long shot threshold is 12.5 meters. So there we go, you may want to take a screenshot of that, have that handy, or just try to memorize those thresholds when you're working on a particular class of weapon. And with that in the background, I'm going to start sharing a bunch of my favorite long shot spots on all of the 6v6 maps that we currently have in the game. Keep in mind, these aren't necessarily the only places to get long shots, it's just the ones that I really like using that I find to be fairly consistent for traffic. Now let's move into some tips, and I'm going to start this off with prep work tips. Things that you can do before you actually get into a match to make your life a little bit easier when it comes to long shots. The first thing I want to point out is if you struggle with judging distances in the game, I'd highly recommend using one of the optics with the rangefinder equipped on it. My personal favorite for this is the X10 Angel 40. With this optic, when you aim at something, you can see exactly how far away you are, and that way you can make sure you're set up appropriately before you even see the enemy player. And that should just cut down on the situations where you think you're far enough away, but maybe you're just right on that threshold, and unfortunately you were like one meter too close. This should reduce those instances. Again, if you're somebody that struggles with that, if not, you can just use whatever optic you'd like. The next thing I'd highly recommend on your class setup, if you are going for long shots, is use the deployable cover. The reason for this is you take that cover wherever you want, so maybe there's a good long shot lane where you get really good high traffic with enemies, but there's just no cover for you to use. Well, now you can just take that cover with you. And on top of that, another great benefit here is you can mount on deployable cover, and this will very significantly cut down on your recoil as well as your sway. And that's obviously going to make it easier to hit your shots at longer ranges as well. Now, on a very similar note to this, another thing you may want to put on your class setup, depending on the class of weapon that you're using, you may want to try using a bipod. And the reason for this is with a bipod, if you go prone, you can mount on the ground, which you can't do without a bipod. And while doing this, this will also very significantly cut down on your recoil and make it so you have a very, very accurate gun. And while this maybe isn't quite as good as deployable cover in a lot of cases, it can still be a great method for getting long shots a bit easier. And also, people often just don't expect you laying on the ground to shoot at them at a long range. Now, another tip that I have outside of the gameplay itself for long shots is more so just something to help you maintain your sanity while working through the monotonous grind that is the long shots. And this is, if it's not too late for you already, I wouldn't recommend getting all of your guns for everything gold first and then working on long shots for everything. Instead, once you get a class of weapons gold, start working on long shots with that while also working on different challenges for different classes of weapons. This allows you to break the monotony up a little bit, and it also allows you to be a lot more picky with the maps that you decide to get long shots on. That way, when you're playing the game and a map pops up that's not very good for long shots, or maybe just not very consistent for long shots, then you work on those other camo challenges that aren't long shots. Whereas if a map pops up that's great for long shots, like Tarak for instance, then you go full on into long shot mode when on those maps. And that will just ensure that you're maintaining efficiency while also ensuring that you don't burn out on the game way too quickly if you're just doing long shots 24 seven. Next up for tips, let's talk about game modes a little bit. And there's actually several different approaches and you may wanna mix and match a little, again, just to make sure you're not burning yourself on the game, doing the same thing over and over again. I know this affects some people more than others. But one thing I want to point out that's fairly underrated is Invasion and Ground War. This might seem very obvious because these are much larger maps where there tends to be a lot more opportunities for keeping yourself at a long range compared to your enemy. It seems like a lot of people just don't like using these modes for whatever reason. It could be that you maybe just don't get enough traffic on these maps because people are spread out so much and therefore you may not get as many engagements per minute, for instance, compared to 6v6. But I just wanted to point out if you're struggling with the 6v6 maps, maybe you want to try out Invasion and Ground War. That could work out well for you. 
Additionally, we have tier one game modes currently, and obviously a ton of people are in tier one going for long shots. And this can be great, especially for guns that don't typically excel at longer ranges, like SMGs, for instance, or at least certain SMGs, because in tier one, all it takes is one headshot with any gun in the game at any range to get a kill. And that's much easier than trying to land like eight bullets with an SMG that's already inaccurate as well. However, there is a key issue with going into tier one for long shots. And this is, there's typically a lot of people going into that mode specifically for long shots. And therefore you may often find yourself fighting with teammates trying to get long shots. Cause maybe there's only one or two good angles on a map for long shots. Well, everybody's gonna be in those one or two angles and therefore you may not be getting them as efficiently as if you just stuck with core 6v6 game modes. I should also mention hardcore is coming soon and therefore you may wanna just hold off on some of the long shot grind as well because hardcore is likely gonna be quite a bit easier than tier one for long shots in general because players will only have 30 HP rather than 50. And then finally, I just wanna point out for a lot of the guns in this game, they're quite effective within long shot ranges and therefore, Core 6v6 is just fine for getting long shots as well. I'm not saying you should do it for every single gun out there, and if you do struggle to kill people at longer ranges in Core, then yeah, wait for Hardcore or play Tier 1. I just wanted to point out that it's still very doable, at least on a good handful of maps for Core 6v6. Also, when it comes to your game mode selection, to get a little bit more specific here, typically I find modes that are a bit more on the linear side tend to play better for long shots. So game modes like Domination, for instance, where at least more often than not, there is a clear distinction between your side of the map and the enemy side of the map. And for the most part, at least, your teammates spawn on your side, their teammates spawn on their side. This just makes it a little easier to just sit and lock down an appropriate lane and get decent traffic in front of you. For many of the other game modes where you don't have that more linear focus, you may struggle to get consistent traffic within a lane, especially if you're staying stationary on one lane. And you also may just get flanked a ton or have enemies spawning behind you all the time. And then finally for the tips that I've got for you guys here, I want to talk about maps a little bit because your map selection is going to be very important when it comes to how effectively you're going to be able to get long shots. So I just wanted to share my personal ranking of the maps, the maps that I really like going for long shots on and the ones that I don't like so much for long shots and I'd much rather work toward other camo challenges if those maps pop up. Just to be clear, these are my tiers based on my experience with the game. Your experience may differ completely and that's totally fine. I'm just sharing my perspective here. And starting it off, let's talk about my top tier long shot maps. These are the ones where I'm always gonna swap over to my long shot class because they're just so consistent for getting long shots. This includes Tarak, Farm 18, as well as Embassy. And I know Farm 18's not a massive map, but it actually does have quite a few good long shot spots. And since it is a bit on the smaller side, you also tend to get a lot more traffic. And that's why I really like that. Tarak is also really self-explanatory. And with Embassy, I just find you tend to get a lot of traffic on the road side of the map where all the vehicles are and that makes for really consistent long shots as well. As for my more middle tier maps, these ones can be really, really good for long shots, but I also find they can be somewhat inconsistent. And for many of them, they do depend fairly heavily on how the enemy team is playing. And if they decide to play in a different way, you may not get any long shots at all on these maps. Shoot House is a perfect example of this, for instance. Shoot House can be the best long shot map in the entire game if the enemy team is also going for long shots and if they're consistently going to that opposite wall on the standard long shot spot that you would tend to use on this map. Map. However, some games you just get nobody going for those long shot spots, therefore you get no traffic. Or another thing that can often happen is you'll have several teammates that are also going for long shots and everybody's mounted up on the same wall and at that point you're just fighting your teammates for kills and therefore it's just not the most consistent all the time. This tier includes El Asilo, Mercado Las Almas, Crown Raceway, Santa Senya, Shoot House, and El Bagra Fortress. And with all of these, I'll often start the match off at least trying to get long shots and I see how it plays out. Sometimes I can rack up a ton of long shots on these maps, whereas other times I'm just not getting any traffic where I need the traffic to be. And therefore I may just switch over to working on a different challenge. And then finally for my bottom tier long shot maps, these are the ones where I don't even bother going for long shots on anymore. This obviously includes Shipment. It also includes Breenberg Hotel. There are definitely a few spots with long shot potential on that map, but I just find they are really, really inconsistent. And then finally with Zarqua Hydroelectric, even though you would think this would be a great map for long shots, cause it's fairly large for this game and it's also very linear. The problem is the way that the power positions and choke points are set up, it's just really hard to get a long shot angle on a lot of the most common positions. And as a result, it just doesn't tend to yield very many long shots at all. 
And with that, that's gonna wrap it up for the tips section of this video. However, I wanted to include one section at the end here, just with my opinions on the long shot challenges. Personally, I don't mind when we have some long shot challenges mixed in for camos in a Call of Duty game. I think it makes a lot of sense. However, I think it made a lot more sense back in the day when we had a tendency to see maps with a lot more practical, longer lines of sight in them. If you think back to the original Modern Warfare 2 maps, it was easy on just about any map in the game to get consistent long shots beyond 38 meters. Whereas now, you're much more limited, I find, with these maps. Additionally, like I said, I don't mind some long shots, but I feel like this game has taken it too far, and I don't think we should have to get long shots for camos on every single gun class in the entire game. I think it would be fine if our Platinum challenges required long shots for like maybe three of the weapon classes, like sniper rifles, assault rifles, and marksman rifles, for instance. But I think for many of the other ones, especially for the weapon classes that aren't designed to excel at long ranges, like SMGs for instance, I'd much rather see a totally different type of camo challenge for those, like kills with no attachments or hip fire kills for instance. I think this would just break up that monotony a little bit and make it far less tedious to get through these challenges because that's the thing, long shots aren't necessarily challenging, they're just tedious because you're sort of forced to play in a very, very passive way due to how limiting these maps can be. So those are just my thoughts. I do think there is currently an overabundance of long shot requirements for the camo challenges, but that is just my opinion. And this is where I wanna hear from you guys in the comments section below. First up, what do you think about the number of long shot challenges that we need to get in this game? Do you like the fact that we need to get so many? Or would you prefer if they mixed in other camo challenges for some of the weapon classes? And second, are there any other tips that I missed here? Is there anything else that you found that helps considerably with getting long shots more effectively? Just let me know all of those thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.